This might be one of our toughest rebuilds yet. We'll be taking over at second division German side Schalke, attempting to bring them back to Bundesliga glory. But there's a few issues. One, we're in the second division and the team is right near the bottom of the table in real life. And two, the club is in huge, huge financial debt. That's right, we'll be giving ourselves five seasons as manager of Schalke to try and take them to the top of the Bundesliga, compete with the likes of Bayern and Dortmund. And we'll be aiming to restore some glory to a club that has won seven first division titles, five pokals and a UEFA Europa League in the past. But there is a twist. As mentioned, their finances are not looking good. We've got negative £100 million in the balance of debts and loans. There's £250 million worth of debt. And if you've played a Schalke in FM24, you'll know that within a month or two, the club goes into administration. That means administrators will come in and try and make this money that we owe back by selling our players against our will. We'll have no control of it. So this is going to be a very, very tough read. Build. Despite underperforming in real life, in Football Manager, Schalke have got a pretty strong team for the second division. One of our key players here has only just joined the club, Timo Baumgartel. Our star keeper, Marius Muller, is also new to the club. And our star striker is 35-year-old German forward, Simon Terode, who's been around the block in German football, but certainly knows how to find the back of the net. Thankfully, though, we've got some great young talent here at Schalke, one of which is Asan Udrego, one of the most promising midfielders in world football, linked to Liverpool in real life will be hoping to get the most out of him and in this save we've got a promising attacker by the name of Jean-Paul Undai I don't know whether he's always good in FM but he looks like he's got a lot of potential here so it might be time to start integrating these youngsters into the first team currently we're predicted to dominate the second division and win the title although that might not be the case throughout the whole season because of course we're going to have to sell players to try and make some of this money back that the club owes so we'll get into this complete transfer overhaul that we're going to have to do at this club in a second but first I like to ask your guys support by smashing the like button for me it really will help the videos here on youtube youtube will see that you guys are liking the video and then push it out to more people which will help the channel grow so thank you to anyone who does that and speaking of growing the channel make sure if you haven't already you hit that subscribe button we just hit 26,000 subscribers and i'm aiming for 30,000 by the end of the year so if you're in this pretty big percentage of people that aren't currently subscribed i'd massively appreciate it if you hit that button don't forget to comment down below what rebuild you want to see next every rebuild that is done is based on your guys guys comment. Schalke was requested last week so we're doing it here for you. And finally if you want to continue these rebuilds yourself you can check out my Patreon, link in the description where you can support me as a creator and in return you'll get access to all of the save files from this rebuild from season 1 to 3, 4 and 5 so you can take over whenever you like and carry it on yourself. Now with all the plugin done let's make some transfers. So as mentioned, with our financial difficulties, we had to sell players and one of the first sales was Blendy Idrizzi. No one in this team was really worth too much other than our promising youngsters who I wanted to keep. So we had to sell players like this. I didn't see a place for him in the squad, so it made sense just to sell him and get any money we could. So we got 76,000 for him. And we've also let Ibrahim Assise, a young centre-back, go to NEC Nishmejen for about £300,000. He's a decent player and probably would have featured for us this season, but we had so much talent in that area that it made sense to try and sell one of those players on and he was one of the few that had interest in him and unfortunately for season one that was really all we could do we just didn't have the money to spend the club is in such a terrible financial situation we just got to deal with a squad we've got which remember is a squad that's still expected to win the league but we've done something about it instead of just sitting on our hands we've decided to promote some of the young players into our first team in the hopes of getting the best out of them we've got the previously mentioned Adrego and Undai amongst a bunch of other players but currently this is apparently what our best 11 looks like in a 4-2-3-1 tactic that we'll be looking to deploy in our first season. It's Muller in goal, who you've met. We've got Brunner at right back. At centre-back, we've got Baumgartel, who you've met as well, and Kaminsky. I don't know how you pronounce his name, but this guy, Thomas Weijan, Weijan, I don't know if that's right, probably isn't. Apologies in advance for any of the pronunciations in this video. He's our left back, and he looks very talented, one of the most talented in this team. We've got a midfield of Templeman alongside Seguin. If I'm honest, I do not know any of these players, really. We've got Drex who at first I thought was Julian Draxler, but it wasn't. A guy named Merkin at left wing, who is also a left back, an Englishman. Kenan Karaman is on the right, a Turkish international with plenty of experience, and Tarod, who we've met, is up front. So this is a team that we've got really for season one. We haven't really got too much else to do. Schalke have had their own rebuild already, so we couldn't make too many transfers. So let's see what we can do with this side, and then from there, we can really get stuck into our rebuild. And hopefully, in this first season, no one gets stolen from us and sold against our will.
And year one has gone perfectly. This is exactly what we needed to try and help this club. Whether we'll stay up in the Bundesliga next year is another question, but we are heading there. We came top in the table with 74 points, us and Hamburg returning to the Bundesliga. 51 goal difference, only six losses and five draws. Joint points with Hamburg, mind you, but we've managed to pit them to the title. Nothing in terms of a cup run, but this is a good first year and it's exactly what we needed. You can see in our finances, after only a couple of months, suddenly our debt and our overall balance cleared up and we're now nearly getting towards a positive balance. And you might be wondering, like me, when I simulated ahead, I was like, what the hell has happened here? If we go to club info, history, and then to landmarks, you will see we came out of administration by the looks of it because we had some kind of takeover. A new chairperson was in charge of the club. Whatever's happened, I don't know, but our finances have cleared up a little bit. Saying that, we really haven't got much to work with next year. We have got a decent bit of wage budget. So if we move this along, we might get a few million pounds to spend, but it's not a crazy crazy amount really for a team looking to try and challenge at the top of the Bundesliga so it won't be easy at all. The left back that we mentioned did very well whose name I'm not going to try and pronounce again. Merkin got 16 goals across all competitions with a great year in the second division of the Bundesliga. Tarode, even at his grand old age of 36 managed to bag plenty of goals for us 22 in 24 but he'll now be leaving us. But we'll be delighted with the performances of Asan Udrego who we asked the assistant to play as often as possible. He appeared 27 times scoring seven and assisting seven in his debut season. Now he's an 18-year-old and then Undai played in this attacking midfield spot as many times as possible yet again with seven goals and three assists in a very good first year for him. So we're out of the second division and back to the Bundesliga, which is where they were not too long ago. They were only recently relegated into the second division. And now hopefully we can make the right transfers to try and keep this team up in our second season. Okay, so it's been a huge overhaul for our Schalke team. Firstly, one of the key players that we mentioned last season, Timo Baumgartel, has left the club to go and join Mines for about 3 million. Sochiro Kazuki, whose face has disappeared for some reason here, has gone to Montpellier for 950,000. We sold one of our best wide options as well, Tobias Moore to Toulouse for just under 1 mil. Marius Muller, our goalkeeper, has also left to go and join Cagliari out in Italy. And that transfer fee was for 750,000 pounds. Aging striker Sebastian Polter was no longer needed. He's also gone to Toulouse. His transfer fee just over 500k. And a lot of players were released at the end of their contracts. One disappointing one though was Thomas Wujan, who we mentioned earlier. He's gone to join Freiburg. He chose to leave. Didn't want to extend his deal because of the club's financial situation. He's left, which is a big loss because he was great for us last year. All of those sales combined led to about six million pounds worth of transfer fee. And we've only spent a million, yet I think we've improved our team massively. Firstly, we've got Troy Parrott on loan for the season from Tottenham. He's joining us after a season out in the Eredivisie where he wasn't amazing, but hopefully he can find some form here. We also take Gabriel Vidovic out on loan from Bayern Munich. The young Croatian is a very talented midfielder who can be deployed either on the left or through the middle, and he spent last season out at Zagreb. Gabriel Slanino is going to be our goalkeeper for the year. The American joining on loan from Chelsea for the season. I think we're paying a fee of Vago, 500k. He's a good goalkeeper with a lot of promise, and who knows if things go well, maybe we can keep him here permanently somehow. So that's the loans done. Then we get into the free transfers. Firstly, we bought in Bernard Tech Pete. He's a Ghanaian international with great pace and acceleration on that right-hand side. He's coming in as one of our best players. He spent his most recent year in Bulgaria with Luda Goretz, and he comes back to Schalke as he was there originally a few years back. Alexandro is going to be our new left-back, the Brazilian former Juventus player. Spent his last year at Juve and actually played quite a few times, mainly off the bench. He was very available as a free agent and he's joined us for a pretty low fee of 25 grand a week. Scott McKenna has joined us from Nottingham Forest coming in as one of our best central defenders. A 27 year old Scottish international didn't play much at all for Forest last year. In fact he did not play at all. For that reason he was let go but I see a good player here who could potentially be a solid option in the Bundesliga. Not quite Zinedine Zidane but we've got Theo Zidane on a free contract from Real Madrid after his contract expired there. He was pretty good for their B team. Could have a potential to go far in the future all depends on how well he adapts to our team and if he really gets into the flow of things sometimes he can be great and sometimes he doesn't really develop at all that's how it's been in recent FM years I'm sure it'd be the same here so hopefully we can get the best out of him and then the only transfer we spent actual cash on to buy the player is Ibrahim Akoli a Gambian 24 year old wide option he joins us from Atalanta having been loaned out through Italy Turkey and then Switzerland most recently with young boys caught the eyes of our scouts and we've signed him if you don't know 
We only sign players here that our scouts recommend. I don't use any of my previous knowledge about Football Manager. And we did stumble into a little bit of a problem. Obviously, we signed a lot of our players on free contracts, but we sold £6 million worth of players. And I noticed literally none of that was making its way into our transfer budget. Whoever we sold, we were getting no cash for. And then I checked and we are getting 0% of the transfer revenue from any of our sales. Because the club was in so much debt and we had a takeover, I think what's happening is every penny we make is now being kept away from being spent at Schalke. They're either using it to repay some hidden debts that I'm not seeing, or they're just not giving us the cash. But we sold £6 million worth of players and got absolutely nothing for it in terms of having more money to spend. So that might be a problem that we have to deal with in this save. But our best 11, in my opinion, is now looking much more Bundesliga ready. If we take a look at it, Slonina in goal with Mehmet Aydin, who was on loan last season, despite being one of our best players. I don't understand why, but he went to Draponzapur out in Turkey, did great. He's coming back now as our best right back by far. A German 24-year-old is one of our best centre-backs now, Henning Matrisani here. He's been at Schalke for a long time and played quite a lot for us last season. He's alongside Scott McKenna and then Merkin at the back, who of course had a great year at left wing last season. Udrego is in that midfield next to Seguan. And then we've got a bunch of new signings in the attack. Tech Petty, Vidovic, Colley and Parrot. A completely new forward line. Hopefully they can all work together and we can get some results in our first season. We've been asked to avoid relegation and it looks like we're predicting to come 13th better than a few teams in the division this year. So fingers crossed things will go well for us. Let's see how our new look side can do in season two. And we've had an absolute stormer of a year. We have finished in a European place. Now the Bundesliga is kind of known for this in the sense of once you get out of the relegation spots, any of these teams from like 14th, 13th upwards could potentially be in and around 5th, 6th, 7th. Obviously the best sides, Bayern, Dortmund and also Leipzig tend to rise to the top. You get the odd outlier like Union Berlin last year, but these places are up for the taking of anyone. Gladbacher in 15th, for example, Leverkusen in 10th, Wolfsburg in 8th, and we're there in 7th with Werder Bremen and Union Berlin. So whilst this isn't the most unexpected result ever, I'm still very happy with it. We've got ourselves a conference league place, which is a competition that we might actually be able to get fairly far in. We've got 52 points, two less than sixth place Bremen, and only three more than Wolfsburg to get that European spot. 10 losses across the course of the year with 15 wins and 12 goal difference. Overall, not a bad return to the Bundesliga and one of Schalke's best seasons in recent history. And we have a few faces to thank for that. The first one is Bernard Tech Petty, who had a great year with 13 goals and five assists in the Bundesliga, which is no mean feat. Vidovic was great coming off the bench in most games. Udrego got us 11 goals from that midfield position and 9 assists. I was asking him and Ndai to play as often as possible. Speaking of Jean-Paul Ndai, he had a great season getting 7 goals and 8 assists. That's caught the eyes of PSG so we might have to sell him. But I should introduce you all to Bayern Munich's next transfer target, Leo Trim Marina who came out of our academy this year and looks absolutely amazing for a 16 year old. Some great ability all around. Physically is where he is lacking the most but he's a technical whiz. He's played quite a few games for us in this first season getting two assists and 18 goals so he's a name that you're probably going to see more of throughout this rebuild Troy Parrott got eight goals but you'll see this man got 23 goals he was a player that I also asked to play as often as possible his name is KK Top and he also came from our academy I'm trying to bring through a lot of academy players this season and Kiki Top was brilliant in the Bundesliga showed promise in our second team so we promoted him and he scored 21 goals in 28 games he's six foot four physically very dominant good technically and mentally as well. But in terms of the modern day physical striker like Haaland, Hoyland, and even, you know, Ossiemen, for example, KK Top certainly fits that bill and he was great for us this year. We now have £35 million in the overall bank balance. There's nothing in the debts and loans. Like I say, I think our debt must have been written off by a new chairman and now he's taking all of our money as payment for that because we still got 0% transfer revenue. But next season, we have been given £35 million to spend and 150000 in the wage budget. So we're heading into season three now we've got European football and I imagine that's going to bring a host of new transfers to the club. And it was a busy season, bringing in just under £20 million in transfers and spending just over 30. We're definitely seeing our biggest overhaul of the squad right here. And our first sale is one that we're a little bit sad about. Jean-Paul Ndai has been sold to PSG for £8.5 million. Once PSG came in, he just wanted to go. PSG then offered him back to us for free for the season on loan. So to add some extra squad depth, I wasn't going to say no to that. So he stays here for a year. He'll play whenever and we get £8 million from him. It is sad to lose a promising young talent that we developed 
developed him well and we made some cash from him. He only came back for a year and now he's left. Bernard Tekpete is left to join Al Wada in the United Arab Emirates for seven million pounds or so after a good first year here. I just couldn't really turn down that kind of money. And again, it was one of those where as soon as a bid came in, he wanted to leave because he knew the paycheck he was going to get if he went there. Midfielder Paul Seguin has left to join Monza. With the emergence of Udrego and Molina in midfield, it was time to move him on. He didn't play much last year and now he's left for 1.3 million. Marcin Kaminski has gone to join Legia Warsaw, a very good centre-back option, but now he's 33 and after a good year in the Bundesliga, not playing too much, he decided his time was up. We let his contract expire and good luck to him over in Poland. And finally, after one season of playing a fair bit, Alexandro has gone to the Qatarian divisions to play for Al Gafra. He played quite a lot for us, but didn't play great. I think his age was starting to catch up to him. You can see that in his lack of physical attributes, but he was good for a year. But we've brought in so many top talent players, so let's move through them as quick as possible. Mikola Shaparenko is our first signing on a free deal to Ukrainian joins from Dynamo Kiev, where he's been exceptional, left on a free contract, and we poached him as quick as we could. Pietro Pellegri has came through as a striking option, again available on a free contract after it expired at Torino, where he wasn't playing that much, but he is a striker with a lot of ability. It hasn't really worked out for him in his career so far, but hopefully here at Schalke, he can find his feet. A real coup for us, Facundo Palestri joins from Manchester United on a free contract. We tried to get Ahmad Diallo. He didn't want to join us, but Palestri did. He hasn't played for Manu at all, having signed from Penarol a few years ago. He played here and there, obviously getting appearances in real life now for Manu, but right here, he's a good player with potential, and we've got him for absolutely nothing. Adamo Nogalo comes in as our best centre-back. The Burkina Faso International joins us from Northland after two good seasons for them. Available as a free agent, we've got ourselves an absolute bargain there. And our final free transfer was Leonardo Lello, who is going to be one of our new left-back options. The Portuguese national joins us from Casapia in the Portuguese divisions, where again, he's had two very good seasons. He's caught our scout's eye and we've picked him up as soon as he was available for free. But we did spend 30 million, as mentioned, so let's see who he bought. First, we've got 23-year-old Croatian goalkeeper Nikola Kavlina. He joins us from Lokomotiva out in the Croatian divisions, where again, last season, he was on fire. One of the best ratings you'll ever see from a goalkeeper. He's cost us 2.9 mil. It was a release clause fee and we are delighted to have him because he comes in as one of our best. I don't like to sign players in multiple rebuilds. I always try and keep it fresh, but once our scouts caught hold of Severe Hausef Naipan and I realised he hadn't yet left Rosenborg, we kind of had to go for it. We were two seasons in. He's a Norwegian international, costing us five mil and he is just going to develop into a world-class talent, almost guaranteed. One of the best this year in FM, but our scouts found him, so I didn't technically use my own knowledge. Speaking of wonder kids, we've got former wonder kid here, Yusuf Demir. He is an Austrian midfielder who went to Barcelona from Rapid Vienna and didn't do too much, moved to Galatasaray, went on loan to Switzerland, back to Galatasaray, has been doing pretty well over the course of these last few years, and we've picked him up for £5 million to be an attacking midfield option. We've bought ourselves who I think might be our new long-term striker up front, Nelson Viper. He's a 20-year-old German signed for £6.25 million from Mainz, where he started getting first-team football, caught our scout sign at six foot four. He's got great physical ability. He's like a better version of KK Top, who we looked at earlier, and he looks ready-made for our first team. And then I wanted to keep that German talent in our team, so we've gone for Leandro Morgala. He signed from RB Salzburg after a good year for them. 11.75 million was the fee, formerly of 1816 München. And now he comes in as our most expensive transfer yet, of this rebuild and it leaves our best 11 now looking in a completely new way a much better shape and there's less reliance on lone players now so we've got Kavlina in goal Aydin at right back with Mogala, Nogalo and Lelo three new players in the defence Udrego and Naipan make up the midfield with Demir, Palestri, Kohli and Viper with some great talent on the bench as well this team is really starting to come together and hopefully we can see the results of that in season three and we certainly have. In our third season, we've qualified for the Champions League, which is insane. We'll talk more about that in a second. Firstly, the German Cup, the Pokal, we got knocked out in the third round by Darmstadt. The Europa Conference League, we never even got a chance to show ourselves off. In the third qualifying round, we took on Legia Warsaw and beat them 11-1. And you'd think at that point we were guaranteed to get in the league phase of the Conference League, but no, we then had to face off in one final playoff game against Espanyol, where we lost 4-3, and that meant we didn't end up getting into the league phase. But that did allow us to focus in on the Bundesliga, where we've qualified for the UCL in fourth spot with 63 
53 points, four points ahead, chases Leipzig, Hoffenheim doing well this year. But as I mentioned before, this is what I mean about the Bundesliga. Where the Bremen finished in sixth last year, this season they finished in 16th. It really can fluctuate a lot. Gladbach getting relegated, bottom of a division. And there we are in fourth place with a great result beating the likes of Leipzig, Wolfsburg, Stuttgart, and also Leverkusen. 20 goal difference, only nine losses. And we have some of our new names to thank for it. Firstly, Yusuf Demir with 17 goals in 39 appearances. Palestri chipping in with 13 goals as well. We've got Morgala doing great. Coley getting eight goals. But Nelson Viper was the star of the show with 31 goals in all competitions, 22 in the Bundesliga. Certainly worth that six million pound investment. Lelo also did well at left back. Nogalo, all of our best players were basically our new signings. At the same time, Udrego is developing really well when he's now valued at over 80 million pounds. And we secured his future in the first team with a long-term contract. We've got Nipan also doing really well for us with nine goals from midfield in his first season across all competitions. And that is exactly what we want to see. Progress, promotion, conference league, Champions League, and maybe in the next two seasons, we can try and challenge the dominance that is Bayern Munich. Financially, we have got £50 million to spend next summer, but still we have a pretty tough problem because we can only spend the money that they give us. Any money that we make from sales, we get nothing of. Still, a 0% transfer revenue from any sales that we make. So we really have to do well with the budget we've got. And when we sell players, we've got to know that money is never going to go back to us. It's just going to go in the pockets of our new owner. With that being said, though, it's time to get some more transfers done. So let's see who we can buy in our penultimate season, season four. Before we get into the transfers, don't forget if you are enjoying the video to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button. Don't worry, I won't ask you again, but if you could do that, you would be an absolute legend. Now I talked about the board giving us no money when we made sales. Put it this way, we made 90 million pounds worth of sales this summer, spent 30 million, and we saw none of that 90 million come back into our transfer budget. I've asked for our transfer revenue to be increased and they just tell me no. So bear that in mind as we go through the sales here. Firstly, after one season at the club, Facundo Palestri has left us joined Saudi Arabian side Al Halal and how can you blame him when they're giving him 500 grand a week we got over 50 million pounds for him after what was a good first year here, but not £55 million pounds worth of first year. Nine goals and seven assists, a seven average match rating, and off he goes. You can't reject that kind of money for him. So yes, Palestri's out the door. And then our goalkeeper's moved on as well to join Al Ali, also in Saudi Arabia. Nikola Kavlina, at the age of 24, now the Croatian international keeper, is getting 500 grand a week and enjoying himself out in Saudi Arabia. Fair play to him. Had a good year for his last time out, but he is never going to turn down 500 grand a week. After not playing much last year, Mikola Shaparenko surprising has left the club already again to Saudi Arabia 6.25 million pounds potentially rising to seven and a half after only six appearances for us on a free contract all off the bench it's a good bit of profit they wanted more of our players though the same club came in and bought Leo Grimmel here who's a centre-back who didn't play much for his last season 3.1 million pounds he used to be a wonder kid in game not so much anymore and he's now left us and then despite a great first year when we started using him Keke Top has now left the club again to go and join Al Weda who is basically our second team at this point you you might remember he scored 21 goals in 28 appearances but with the arrivals of Pellegri and also last season Nelson Viper he dropped down the pecking order and suddenly the assistant just never used him at all so we've moved him on for 2.5 million he was great when we needed him good luck to Keke Top out there I'm sure he'll do great but as you can see by the star ratings we kind of moved on from his ability Derry John Merking our left back was upset when he found out you were rejecting an offer from Sheffield so we decided to let him go we had Lello coming on a free deal last year and he kind of took up all of Merkin's first team appearances he he only played twice as a starter last season so good luck to him out in the Premier League so yeah as you can see we made 90 million pounds worth of sales and none of that came back to us that being said though we still did have our transfer budget that we were originally given which we needed to not only replace the players we just sold but also get some new ones to improve our team firstly we bought in Ernest Nuama a Ghanaian 22 year old with already 41 international appearances and 17 goals electric pace on the wing and he is going to be a star for us having joined from the Belgian league in all honesty I don't really know what's happened because it looks like he started off at Norseland and then he got bought for 25 million by a Belgian side that I didn't think would have 25 million to spend he's then been loaned to Lyon he then came back and looks like he's played in the second division for that same Belgian side 
And then in the third division, like, I have no clue at all what's going on, but we've got him on a free contract. Either way, Ernest Nwama looks like a talent. An extra wing option comes in the form of the fifth member of the Beatles, as people call him. It is Tottenham's former player, Brian Gill. I don't know if he is still with Tottenham in real life. Clearly, he is. And he actually played a lot for them in the football manager world. We've picked the Spaniard up as a free agent, a former wonder kid with Spanish international appearances. Hopefully, he'll fulfill all of his promise on the wing for us. And we've got a new centre-back, Mies Hilgers, the Dutchman joins us from FC20 after three great years for them on a free contract. Great ability all around and comes in as one of our best in defence. With our keeper leaving, we needed a new one, so we have signed Casper Tobias, who is an absolute gem of a sweeper keeper with 17 rushing out, 16 one-on-ones, 16 kicking, passing ability. He is going to be an absolute star. Signing from Legia Warsaw for three and a half mil, rising to four. He is an absolute bargain. We've got a new left back. Again, we're looking to build up this German core in our squad, signing Aaron Zentner from Augsburg for 6.75 million. He's had a few good years out for them and I think he could be what we need at left back. With Gladbach being relegated, we were able to sign Manu Kone on a cut price deal for only 11.75 million pounds. A good midfield option. He'll give us some squad depth and hopefully compete for some first team places. And then our most expensive signing of the summer is Luca Romero, the Argentinian midfielder who's had a great few years out with Milan. He hasn't played much, but when he has played, he's played really well and we've managed to pick him up for 13 million after a loan out last year in the Bundesliga which looks like it never worked out for him but I think we've got a great talent and I'm sure he'll be good for us fingers crossed this guy has a lot of potential in the real life footballing world and also FM I hope to see at least some of that in this save and just to show you we've got 140 million pounds in the overall balance thanks to our sales and we still got zero percent of transfer revenue I am asking the board for more and they shut me down absolutely every time which I don't understand but we've just got to rock with it yes we do get quite a lot of money to spend but not getting the money back from the players you sell when we can't really hang on to these players because they want to leave the club it's really hard because we're having to spend all of our budget just replacing the players that we lose but even saying that we have built a stunning team here ready for the Bundesliga I think a Champions League quality first 11 now never going to win it but at least able to compete at a decent level I think this is a great squad with a great bench as well hopefully this season we can go even further and push for that title and we are creeping up that table. We're now in third place this year with 71 points, joint second, let's call it, with RB Leipzig. Finishing with 21 goal difference, only five draws and seven losses, which is less draws than Bayern got, but they lost less games. So we're starting to close the gap, but still 11 points to try and fill out in our final season. So it's likely that will never happen. The Champions League, though, we got to the knockout playoff round. So well done to us, making it through the league phase in 19th place. For playoff round, we were up against Hoff who beat us 8-5 on aggregate. That is the most disappointing part of it all. We really could have taken them out. I don't think we're good enough to be in the playoffs and the knockouts of the Champions League, but... Hoffenheim shouldn't be knocking us out, particularly not 8-5 in aggregate and losing 7-4 at home is very, very disappointing. The Pokal, we got to the quarterfinal, no trophies yet, but we are working the Schalke team upwards and fixing their financial situation very slowly. Asano Drago has had the year of his life now. He got 22 goals in all competitions. He's a great player who's going to go on to get even better. A model citizen, only 21 years of age here with some incredible attributes and some great seasons under his belt. He is going to go so far and we're going to have to give him a new deal so hopefully he doesn't leave the club. Ernest Nwama was great as well with 15 goals in all comps and 13 assists in the Bundesliga. A brilliant first year. Nipan developing well. Brian Gill also doing really well on that left wing having signed as a free agent. Great performances from lots of people including Yusuf Demir. Nelson Viper still chipped in with 23 goals and to mention the midfielder Marina that we spoke about earlier right at the start of the video. He's been developing but not developing the way that I wanted him to. Still not really filling out physically and at the age of 18 he's not getting picked by the assistant anymore so I wonder if he's one of those players that's just never going to make it either way though financially the club is looking great 175 million in the bank balance they've given us 80 million pounds of that to spend and now the club is apparently in the new takeover so I have no idea what's going on fingers crossed we have sorted the finances out here because they're still giving us 0% of transfer revenue but it says there's nothing in the debts and we've also got 175 million in the balance so I feel like things are good I'm not going to look the gift horse in the mouth though let's just see the 80 million that we've got and spend it as well as we can and let's just assume we're not going to make any money still from any of the transfers that we make.
And this summer we didn't have to worry as much because we sold nowhere near as many players and we didn't sign as many either. We were really balanced in our transfer spending, trying to do the best we can financially for the Schalke team so they don't get in the situation that they were in when we took over. Firstly, Marina, who we mentioned earlier, he's going out on loan for the season to Hoffenheim and he's going to be a regular starter there apparently. Remember, this is a Hoffenheim team that knocked us out in the Champions League, so still a good side. Scott McKenna has been a good servant to us, but he's now going to play out in Saudi Arabia. Nine 9.25 million was the fee. Fair play to him. Pietro Pellegri never really settled down here as a player at Schalke and he's gone to Saudi Arabia too for two million pounds. And then Aaron Zentner who he signed to be our left back. It didn't quite work out for him. He got upset because he didn't start as many games as he wanted uh, but we still made a profit. We sold him to Qatar for 10 million and we put that money in the bank and I'm sure he'll have a great career but it's not going to be with us. Coming into the team is Crystal Palace's star midfielder Czech Bukore who is being linked with moves to Liverpool in the summer of real life this year for like 60 70 million all paper rumors of course but he's very highly thought of at Palace and we have got him for free the former French league midfielder is a very balanced talent Giannis Constantelias gives us some extra options through the middle and on the wing the Greek star boy was available as a free agent from Powok with amazing dribbling and first touch hopefully he'll be a silky dribbler that the fans will love to watch we've got a new defender as well his name is Killian Sedilia if I pronounce that right formerly of Freiburg signed for Wolfsburg went to Rennes and now has joined us for 30 million as a right back slash centre back option who can give us cover in both areas. Speaking of cover at full back, we've got Riccardo Marchesia, the Italian, joining us to be a left back option. Five million pounds from Frosinone after some great seasons for them in Serie A and Serie B. He looks like a good talent to help with that position. And then Nelson Viper has got some competition up front with the signing of David Datro Fafana. Went to Union Berlin on loan in his first year, didn't do much, hasn't scored a goal for four years, so we spent 13 million on him. Look, we believe in his potential, not how he's been playing recently he's got the ability and I'm sure he'll score goals for us and with that team we're now predicted to finish fourth in the Bundesliga but we know we can do better than that and we are pushing for that top division speaking of the man earlier that we have no clue what happened to him Ernest Nwama he is now considered one of the best players in the Bundesliga um, and yeah I just don't know who he is or where he's turned up from or how his career has gone the way it has in the FM world who are this random Belgium team who are able to spend 25 million and then loan a player out I've got no clue and um, he's considered the fourth best player in the whole league behind Mosailia and Michael KO'd at Bayern Munich. And heading into our final season, here is the best 11, the team that we've managed to assemble with five years at Schalke. It's Tobias in goal with Morgala, Hilgers, Nogalo, Lelo, Udrego, Naipan, Nuama, Yusuf Demir, Gil and Viper with some great options on the bench like Ducore, Sedilia, Fafana, Mehmet Aydin as well at right back, Ibrahim Akoli, Manu Kone, Luca Romero. This team has really came together. At the same time, we've been developing the club's facilities and the academy coaching, youth coaching. We've got six 62,000 capacity stadium where a four-star club considered a rich club with a value of 1.5 billion. Let's see what we can do in our final season. It's likely going to be no trophies but we can at least try and close that gap a bit more on Bayern and who knows if you want to continue to rebuild you can check it out on Patreon and give it a go yourself. And I cannot believe this. I said you know we're not going to win anything. It's not going to happen. Look at this. Knocked out in the third round of the Pokal. Knocked out in the league phase of the Champions League. This is not a team that you would expect to do very well in the season. I mean, bear in mind, we finished 25th in the Champions League. So one space away from making it into the knockouts. But the Bundesliga, we won it. I, I don't know what's happened. I don't know how we're so bad in other competitions, particularly the Pokal. We've never even got to a semi-final, if I remember right. But we have won the Bundesliga with the same amount of points as Bayern. They drew more than us. We lost more than them. But our goal difference was significantly higher. 84 points, 84 points. No one in the league anywhere close to us this year. It looks like a real bad season for all the other teams. Basically became the battering rams of us and Bayern Munich. We managed to edge them to the title and we have some top players to thank for it. Nuama continues to be one of the best in the whole league with a 7.67 average match rate. And that is crazy stuff from a guy who I've never heard of. No offense to him. I just don't know who he is and he's doing so well. We've got um, Yusuf Demir coming in with 19 goals. Kohli getting two goals. Jao Felipe, I have no clue who you are, mate, but you have scored seven times. Okay, he's been playing for the second team, yet that's came up in the first team part. I don't know why that's happened, but either way, let's forget about him. Udrego gets 16 goals. Datro Fafana gets 26. Brian Gill with 13. Nelson Viper has maybe not played 
anymore by the looks of it. Now he did play fairly regularly and scored 10 times. We've got Luca Romero chipping in with two goals as well. Naipan with seven, developing into a top talent. We've now got the club having so many players with high values. Look at all of them. All of these guys here we could sell for above. £50 million pounds or so from Siddler upwards. Lots of great talent, all young talent as well. At the same time, the club's finances are through the roof with £200 million pounds in the balance, been given £74 million for the next season that we're not going to play, of course, but 0% transfer revenue still. It's been one of the weirdest rebuilds I've ever done, but it's been so fun to do. Facilities we've managed to increase as well over time, and I feel like this club is in a great position. We have won the Bundesliga, restored glory to Schalke. They're no longer sitting in the second division. They are top of German football. Ball. There you go, guys. That has been the rebuild. If you have enjoyed, smash the like button, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.